you know those big coolers you take to the beach with the two handles they're like they come in like red and blue or whatever the white lid it was one of the big ones that you can't really carry by yourself if it's filled up with stuff because it's too awkward it had mad ice bottles of liquor beer everything in there these niggas picked it up boo smashed it on my face dog I remember thinking like I'm gonna die and here's the crazy So boom, check it. Now ain't that how every great story start out? Now why would mine be any different? These are the Chronicles of Mike Murphy. Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Mike Murphy with your narrator, comedian Mike Murphy. Now listen, when it comes to this storytelling, I'm one of the best to do it if you ask me. And that's in my humble opinion. But before we go any further, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Like, share, comment, tell a friend to tell a friend any way that you can contribute to grow in my audience is greatly appreciated because without you, there is no me, so I'm thankful. Um, in today's episode, I'm going to take y'all back to March of 2009, where I got stomped into the ground by like 20 bikers at a motorcycle party. But before I could even tell you how that happened, I got to take you back to the week before to show you what led up to this uh, series of unfortunate events. So the week prior to this day... My motorcycle club, Maxima Sport Bike Riders, we taken a trip to Buffalo, New York to support a, a, a motorcycle event up there. I don't know what club was having a party, but we was going to support them. I guess it was a club that we had respect for or whatever. It's the winter time and it's cold in Pittsburgh, so we not driving up on bikes. We taking the one vehicle up and it was me, my president, sick with it. And two probies, Butterfly and Dreads. Now, Dreads was my childhood friend. I brought him to the club. So even though he's a probie, they don't really know him. I know him since we was kids. This is my guy. It's my man, 50 Grand. You know what I'm saying? And we don't even call him. His name, Dreads, they gave him that name in the club because his braids was so nappy, they look like dreadlocks. We His name's Lex. You know what I'm saying? So when they start calling him Dreads, it's funny because I'm calling him Dreads. No, and I ain't his name, but you know, whatever. So it's the four of us. Dreads is going to drive up in the, in, in the, the Yukon. We got, we're going to go up in the truck. And I remember on the way up there, he's driving without a license. I didn't even notice. He's doing like 96, gets pulled over, gets a crazy ticket. I thought they was going to tow the whip or, or take him or something. They give him, they just give him a ticket. They really could have probably took him to jail. They give him a crazy ticket. One of us got to finish driving. But we make it up there. You know, it wouldn't even be a road trip without something crazy like that happening anyways. So, um, oh, real quick, probie. If y'all don't know what that means, probably don't. It's like probation period for somebody joining a club. It's sort of like a pledge, trying to join a fraternity. Sometimes they make these, these people wash bikes at the, at, the, at the bike event. Or, yo, go bring the bags in on a, on a trip. Just little stuff like that. Like, you got to prove yourself. And you got a certain period of time that we monitor you, you know, what you doing to see if you worthy to be in the club or not. So we got the probie driving, my man Dreads. We finally get the Buffalo or whatever. We like, yeah, it's about to be on. We, we, we in there. We partying. We having a good time. Now, I ain't drunk, but I am under the influence. I'm a little bit tipsy, you know what I mean? And so I finished my bottle of beer, my Corona, and instead of going to find like a trash can and throw it in, I just put it in my back pocket. Now, this was back in the days of 09. We ain't have the, the, the slimmer jeans. I had some boot cut joints on. Big back pocket. You could probably put a Mac-10 back there or something. So I got the Corona bottle fitting comfortably in the back pocket or whatever. At some point, they play, you know, throw your hood up. F them other niggas. I'm a ride for my nigga. They play in that, right? Now, I don't care if you play that on an army base, in a regular club, wherever you play that at, whoever's there is going to rep whatever it is they rep. So since we had a motorcycle event... We repping our club, you know what I'm saying? So what I did was I took my colors off. Colors are your vest with your, your club um, patch and, and rockers on it. I take my colors off and I'm holding it up. That's what most people's doing. So I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Repping my, you know what I mean? Whatever. And I think that's probably why I put the Corona in the back pocket so I can free my hand up. At some point while I'm doing that mid-verse, I feel tremendous amount of pressure on my chest. A, 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 a shoving of a lifetime. This dude pushed me so hard, my chin touched my belly button. 
I was like, hey, yo. And before I could even like pull the colors down, I see this big 6'8", short night, 340 looking dude. I'm like, yo. He like, nigga, don't ever, don't ever put your, your colors in my face. Nigga, that he's going off, right? And he's not doinking me, but he's like getting close. And I'm like, oh, all right, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever, the music's loud. I put my, my vest back on, and I go grab the Corona bottle out of my back pocket. I'm about to hit him with it. Because even though that's probably not a wise decision, because if I miss, he probably going to lay me clean out. I still do it because whatever, I'm going to have to take that risk. You're not pushing me. Bro, you're not pushing my chin into my, to my pelvis, pause, and think that I'm just going to be like, hey, my bad, bro. Won't happen again. Nah, bro, it's about to, we clearing this joint out. Now, shout out to uh, my, my, my Black Soprano family and, you know, Griselda from Buffalo. I really rock with y'all. I, I love y'all in Buffalo. But uh, these particular gentlemen, nah, I don't like these dudes. Not at all. Um, so I pull, I try to pull the Corona bottle out the, the back pocket. Now the, the clasp on my, um, my leather jacket, like the, the loop, the, the button thing gets caught on my key ring. And so when I try to pull the bottle out, it yanks my hand down and I drop the bottle and it breaks on the ground. Dude was like, yo, you just gonna hit me with a bottle? And I was just like, nah, I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, the jig is up. Like, he about to crush me now. And and I can't remember. This is vague. This was a long time ago. But before I could really answer him or could get, get, get mix it up, somebody intervened. They break it up. And he's going crazy. And I'm surprised that somebody even was willing to try to separate us because he's like, he look like Suge Knight. He's like 6'8", big dude. They get him out. Anyways, long story, they get him out. We partying. I'm hearing the, the talk that he outside with the ratchet waiting for us i'm like well we not going out that door then we gonna go out this door so we slide out the side getting the whip we out we get invited to another party at one of the club the uh motorcycles clubhouse that's like a place they hang drink you know what i mean got couches this is like a, a hangout you know what i'm saying so we drive over to the to the clubhouse we in there we at the bar we getting drinks or whatever some dude walk up to me black dude dreads not my probie, another dude, and he was from New Brotherhood in Buffalo. And he like, yo, bro, what, what was up with dude? What was his problem, man? He was tripping. I'm like, yeah, man, I don't know what is, I don't know, what, you know what I'm saying. I don't know, bro. I'm just chilling, having fun, man. He's bugging out, man. Fuck that nigga, whatever. He like, yeah, man, that nigga bugging his shit. Yo, man, we don't even drink out here, bro. You with us, man? We we in the back having drinks and shit, right? Now I'm too tipsy to realize he's trying to line me up. And I'm and my president then walked away somewhere to probe. They they mingling. I'm dolo, you know what I'm saying? So he like, yeah, man, it's like for the visitors, they be out here. We in the back, man. The real, we hang in the back. We got better liquor back there. Yeah, come back here with us, bro. I'm like, oh yeah, and with y'all. I slide as soon as I slide in the back, big homies there. That dude did lure me into the back. It, it, that's his cousin. I'm like, oh shit. I starting to, it's starting to unfold that I'm about to get scraped up. I'm like, oh, this ain't looking good at all, oh, dog. Like, I ain't never going to be heard from again. I'm going to die in Buffalo because this nigga is wild big. Pause. And before it could even get mixy again, my president sick with it walking like, oh, oh, oh. He shoved me back. Watch out. Yo, what's going on? Yo, nah, you don't talk to my, my member like that. You got, you got an issue? Talk to me. I'm the president. He start checking niggas, right? I'm like, oh, shit. Sick with it. He, he with this shit. They respect him, too. He like, nah, but he did this. He's like, nah, if you got an issue, talk to me. But the so in the mix of that, we 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 all hash it out. Dude apologized for pushing me. I apologize for trying to smack him with the bottle. We dap it up. He's like, yo, let's get drinks and shit, man. I'm glad y'all cool as hell, man. It's a misunderstanding. We good. We on. We laughing with him all night, having a good time, right? Yeah, boss, all love. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's flick it up. We taking pictures and shit. The picture out there somewhere. So we end up staying. With some broad that sick with it new out there. We stayed the night with her. In the morning, we drive back. Fast forward a week. One of the clubs in Pittsburgh, the Afro Dogs, they have in their annual event, their anniversary party. So when clubs have chapters in different cities, usually if it's like an anniversary party, like the annual joint, those chapters will all come to that city to support their club. It's sometimes it's mandatory. So the Afro Dogs got a couple chapters. Same with New Brotherhood. And I could be wrong. I believe that Afro Dogs and New Brotherhood are kind of like connected a little bit. So when one has something, the other club supports it. 
but they're not the same club. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. So the dude that I got into it with, with the dreads up in Buffalo, he was with New Brotherhood. But I told you, we, we cleaned that up, so it was all good. So when Afro Dogs had a thing, I see him down there. Oh, what's good, homie? Oh, what up with you, bro? It's all love. We dapping it up. It's, it's great. We kicking it, you know what I'm saying? It's packed. Now, the event is at a place called the Homewood Coliseum. Anybody from Pittsburgh knows Homewood is one of the top two worst neighborhoods in Pittsburgh, and it's not two. I think Fine View or Northview Heights is, is two, and Homewood as a whole is one. It's the worst neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? And when we had gangs, it was like a crip neighborhood. And they still be repping this shit now, so it's, you know what I'm saying? We never really got gangs, and they still be saying it. So that lets you know how serious it is. So they have the event in Homewood. A little caveat, a lot of the motorcycle clubs in Pittsburgh originated in Homewood. So there's that. So we at the Homewood Coliseum, huge place. It's packed. We in there, we having a good time, whatever. It's me. Sick with it, LJ, Flash, Detail, Devil Dog, and Dreads, and another member named Gene. We all in there. And um, and, and, and the other pro B, Butterfly, she might have been in there too. We was only missing like two or three members at the time, and it wasn't at this event. So we ended up having a good time. Now, they do this thing called Color Count. It's, they give out trophies at the at the events. The Whoever traveled the furthest distance on their motorcycle. Whatever club got the most people in attendance. They got different stuff like that. So how they do it is they line up two lines like this. A line of people, a line of people. And the clubs walk down the middle and they count how many members. Now, the, one of the first rules I learned in this motorcycle life is when you're doing color count, you don't, break, you don't break that line. You don't cut in between it. You don't leave it. Nothing. Like once that line is set, it's set. It's kind of how... That's what I was told. You know, it's like disrespectful. If you cut, like, like when them dudes is dancing and the fraternities and sororities and stuff, when they dancing, if you like cutting in between them, ah, oh, they'll scrape you up. I've seen it happen. The whole fraternity will wash you. They don't play that. Sort of like the same thing with the bike shit. So they doing color count and dreads is like, we standing behind one of the rows and on the other rows of this tall, bald, uh, light skin, like paper, brown paper bag colored dude, right? And my man's like, yo, you know who, who homie is? I'm like, nah, why? He was like, you, you, him right there. I'm like, yeah, dude, the, look, the dude like Tupac. Now, he ain't really look like Tupac. He looked like the nigga that would play Tupac in a Tubi movie. That's what he looked like. He like, yeah, dude. I'm like, nah, I don't know him. Why? He like, he grinning on me. He mean mugging me. Like, I don't know what that's about. I'm like, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't even worry about it. He like, all right, cool. They doing color count. I see him break the line. And start walking towards us and get right in front of us in the other line. So I tap Dreads like, yo, pay attention. Because that he ain't supposed to do that. That's a big no. So now my mind is like, yo, let's be alert. Like 30 seconds later, he turned around. What's popping, nigga? We got a problem? Says that to, to, to Dreads. I'm like, oh, I put my elbow all this in his chest. Like, oh, back up, fam. What's up with you? What you what, nah, what's going on? That's my probe. You don't talk to him. You know what I'm saying? You got an issue. You talk to me. What's, what's the issue? Nah, this nigga, da, da, da. He's saying something to him. Like, it, 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 none of it makes sense. He didn't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So this dude is, I don't know if he's mistaking him for something. I don't know what's going on. He's in, um, I believe, Afro Dogs in, I think, Akron, Ohio, maybe. Something like that. But he's going off. I'm like, nah, bro. Ain't no issues. We chilling. Like, yo, go ahead with that shit. Yada, yada, yada. So then another one of his dudes come up like, ah, he barking all crazy. By him doing that now, my man Gene sees it. Now Gene come over, Gene like 6'6". Six, six. He like a, a ex-basketball uh, ex player. So he, he tall, you know, he solid. He like, yo, what the, what's going on? Da -da -da. He like, nah, nigga, you shut up. Da -da -da. Gene like, nigga, you ain't going to do shit, man. He was a hoe. And he's like all in his face, right? Dude's like, yeah, yeah, say son. Gene just <laughs> steals him, right? I mean, cleans him up. The other dude cocks back and just swings at dreads, but just misses him. So I steal him. Bow. Oh, it's we, we fighting now. Here's why this is a bad mistake. Because the dude that looked like the 2B Tupac, the club he's in, this is his club's party. So it's probably like six or seven of their chapters there. I'm not even exaggerating. Between them and New Brotherhood, it's 150 of them in there. 
it's eight of us. You know what I'm saying? Nine of us, maybe. And one of them, two of them is a woman. So it's really seven of us. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't got time to think like that when it's going down. You know what I mean? So we just start rumbling. Boom, 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 boom. Next thing you know, I'm on a grind get picked up by like three dudes. Pause. Boosh! You know those fold-out tables to be at like the bingo hall? They got the legs that pull out like this. And you like slide the little metal thing down and lock them in place. One of those. They slam me on that joint and the whole shit breaks. Boosh! There's people at the table. So I get slammed. I'm Now I'm partially under the table, right? This whole side of my body is buried under a table, right? I can't even move my arm because I'm pinned. They're, I mean, they're kicking me in the face with boots, punching me. And I'm like, ain't nobody going to help me, bro. Like, this is crazy. And it's not one. It ain't two. It ain't three. It's like 10 of these dudes. And I just see more dudes coming like, yeah, man, stomp that nigga. I'm like, no, don't. They're mashing me, right? At one, oh, that was crazy. Pause. At one point, swear to God, at one point, you know those big coolers you take to the beach with the two handles? They're like, they come in like red and blue or whatever, the white lid. It was one of the big ones that you can't really carry by yourself if it's filled up with stuff because it's too awkward. It had mad ice, bottles of liquor, beer, everything in there. These niggas picked it up. Boo! Smashed it on my face, dog. I remember thinking, like, I'm going to die. And here's the crazy thing. My daughter was due to be born in, like, three or f- like three weeks from that from that date. Like, I'm, I got a daughter being due in three weeks, and I'm like, I'm not even going to see her. I'm going to die. Like, I, I kind of started to accept it. Like, oh, it's over, bro. Like, I'm not getting no help, and these niggas is relentless. They're going crazy. Brass knuckles and shit, they're going hammer time. Dude picks up a, a gallon, a half gallon, whatever it is, uh, the Jack Daniels. Turns it over. I'm like, yo, you better not. I said that out of my... Like, I remember saying, like, you better not. <laughs> Breaks that shit all on my face, right? Now I got liquor in my eyes, blood, water. I'm, I'm panicking, and it's, they're not letting up. They're just <laughs> stomping me dudes from everywhere. I'm like, oh, my God. Then I just hear, bop, bop, bop. Some rounds go off. Everybody start to clear out. I come on from under the table. I'm like halfway like unconscious a little bit. I stand up and I'm look, look, looking around and everybody like scattering out or whatever. Guess who I see? The nigga with the dreads from Buffalo that was squashed, whatever. we He was getting big licks in on me when I was on the ground. I see him kind of like looking around like this. Oh, I'll run up to him. <sighs> Bow! Just dropping, right? I'm like, nigga, yeah. Fuck is wrong with y'all. Y'all niggas thought y'all was going... And I just feel myself get yanked from behind, paused, and pulled over oh, the wall, right? And I'm like, oh, not again. When I look back, it's my man LJ like, yo, we out. I'm like, oh, shit, good look. We break out. Everybody jumping on the bikes. We all leaving. You know what I'm saying? To go different places or whatever. And I remember not putting my helmet on because I tried to and it wouldn't fit. And I know my skull is crazy big already. Pause. But the helmet wasn't fitting. So I remember just like leaving it like on top of my head and right into six house where we all met up at, right? So we get to six house. I get to his driveway. I barely parked the bike. I collapse in his driveway and I'm sitting there like looking up at the sky thinking like, oh, I'm not going to make it, bro. Like something's really wrong with me. Like I'm, I'm hurting bad. And I just hear all these bikes revving. I'm like, yo, if these niggas that jump me follow me up here and I'm dolly like this, there's no one here to help me. I'm dead. And I'm trying to like get up to like run and it's sicking them. It's my motorcycle club pulling up like, yo, what that? You good? I'm like, nah, bro, what's going on? I'm sitting there like, oh, thank God, right? So when I look up, I don't see dreads. He was in a truck because he never had a motorcycle. He was joining a bike club but never had a bike. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking for him. I don't see him and I don't see Gene. And I'm like, yo, I know they was with me on a fight. Where did they at? Now, I told the story before, and I thought that they just left me. Like, the fight broke out and they took off. That's not what happened, so I want to clear it. When I talked to them afterwards, they was both fighting, but when the shots let off, everyone scattered. They got up, too, and they left. Lex said he went to the truck to get the hammer, and I don't know what Gene did, but Gene got his colors taken. Like, that's bad. That's not good at all. Like, if y'all seen Sons of Anarchy... I think it was like season three. They took the dude Juice's colors 
And they was like talking crazy to him. Like, that's a no-no. They took Gene's vest. And so I'm telling sick and them what's going on. They're like, yo, what happened? I'm like, bro, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of still out of it. I'm calling everybody. No one's answering. Finally, they get a hold of dreads. He's like, y'all went to the truck to get the joint. I'm like, what? Thinking that he left me to go get it. I'm like, nah, you don't go get it. You fight me, then we go get it. But nah, he did rumble. And then he went out to go get it after the, you know what I'm saying? But I got, I got baked up. Only reason that I even survived that was because the dudes that shot into the air was my man, um, my man Fawns from the Pittsburgh Gentleman. He's a, a cop. And then another dude named Perry from a club called Riding High or Flying High or something, Riding High, they shot into the, to this. that's what broke it up. But, and they was rumbling with me. My, my club was, I'm not going to say they wasn't fighting with me. They just didn't know it was me. They was getting pulverized. You know what I'm saying? They just standing around like, damn, it's a big ass fight. What's going on? Yo, let's get everybody and get out of here. So they leave out like, yo, we got every head count. Yo, 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 where my guy? I don't know. We got to go back in there and find him. Then they come in and LJ's like, oh, he's the one getting whooped. Pulls me over the wall like we got to be out. So when I call Gene, he ain't answering. Gene shows up to Six Crib in his car. And I'm like, yo, where your bike? And he got on regular clothes. I'm like, yo, what happened? Like, he like, oh, man, I'm about to go clap this shorty's cheeks. I went to your crib and shower real quick because I was letting him use my crib to store his bike. So he had a key. He left the scene. Goes to the crib, showers, changes, gets his whip. Now he about to go find Shorty. Nah, go find your colors, nigga. They took your vest. We didn't know that at this time, but he he he's out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, what's wrong with you? My man Hurricane calls like, yo, I got Gene's vest. One of the dudes got it. I got it back. I'm like, yo, he was at work. So I don't even know how he got it. But it was crazy. Dude. I got whooped by like 20 bikers. I was bleeding out of my ear. I end up going to my baby mom's house and just sleeping on her couch in case I died. Someone will find me because I didn't think I was going to make it through the night. Believe it or not, when I woke up the next day, I didn't have a scratch on me. I had like a little like, because I'm light, I had like a little red mark like right here. And I think that's from the cooler because it was like, it wasn't like a brush burn, but it was like a little red mark. And that was it. Like I was totally fine. I woke up the next day like, I feel, you know what I mean? I'm sore a little bit, but that's it. I'm like, yo, this is really crazy. And I don't even know what that situation was about because the ball head dude, the 2B Tupac, we didn't even see him the week before, but I definitely got my lick off, you know what I'm saying, on dude that, from New Brotherhood. So it was just crazy. And I never even figured out what the smoke was about ever to this day. And then I remember some chick I was messing with um, from Akron one day, on Facebook, she made a status saying that that 2B Tupac dude had got killed, like on some street shit. And I remember thinking, like, that's exactly what you... I ain't never felt that good about somebody losing their life as I did that dude. You know what I'm saying? She told me, like, yeah, remember so-and-so? Yeah, he got killed last night. Like, I'm so... I'm messed up. I'm like, bitch, I don't care. Good, huh? She blocked me after that. I never talked to her again. She was mad that I wasn't upset that homie got smoked. Bro, he almost killed me. What are you talking about? But I was in a Homewood Coliseum... Got jumped by like 20 bikers. And it was so bad. I swear to God, I'm telling the truth. That that venue got shut down after that. It's never been rented out to anybody ever again since that night because of that. But a lot of people gained a lot of respect for me because they seen how I stood tall. I banged. I didn't run. I, I fought toe-to-toe with a bunch of dudes. And I came out that joint unscathed. You know what I'm saying? So that's my story about how I got jumped by 20 bikers in 2009. But before we leave, man, please, again, hit that subscribe button. Like, share, comment, tell a friend and tell a friend. Any way you can contribute to growing my audience on this page is greatly appreciated because without you, there is no me. So until next time, y'all be safe. These are the Chronicles of Mike Murphy.